Welcome to part two of the installation and commissioning of this Glowworm Microcom Combi Boiler. It's basically the same boiler as the Compact. Anyway, if you haven't seen the first video on the installation of the boiler, then I will leave a link in the description below. So let's get on with part two and get this little boiler commissioned. So that's the second tightness test done. I just want to print off the results. So that's the results of the second tightness test kept. So let's continue with this commission. Now, next thing I'm going to do is perch. Now this cooker is the furthest point on the line from the gas meter. I've taken my first reading at the meter. I need to pass 0 0.01 meters cubed or 10 decimeters cubed. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna get everything running. It's not a long run, so it shouldn't take much purging, but I still need to pass this minimum volume. I'll make sure everything is burning good. Then I can go back to the meter and make sure I have passed this minimum of 0 0.01 meters cubed, or 10 decimeters cubed. When I've done that, I can now take my standing pressure and working pressure. Before I take my standing pressure and working pressure, now the boiler is technically ready to run, I just want to test the safety devices first. So I'm going to test the flame supervision device or flame rectification. So first thing I'm going to do is turn the tap on and get the boiler fired up. So now you can see we have a flame and the tap symbol is flashing. So what I'm going to do is just isolate the gas underneath here and this should put this boiler into fault. So the boiler's trying to fire up again. It's now trying to fire up for the second time. And now it's third attempt. Now this should be the fourth and final attempt. You can now see we've got a fault of F29. So we need to have a look in the manufacturer's instructions to see what F29 is. It's probably no gas, but then to reset it, we hold in the off button and turn back on the gas and now it should fire back up again. And there you go, the boiler is now back up and working, so that's testing the safety device. Now what I've gone and done is I've gone and connected one of my TPI SP620 digital manometers onto the boiler and the other one I've connected to the meter to do my standing pressure. Now I've had to do it this way because I left the TPI DC711 connected and turned on while I went for my dinner. I did turn the gas off but I just left it connected. And the batteries run flat. <laughs> so I've had to get dig out these two digital manometers. So they're now reading standing pressure. Now I've zeroed them both before I put them on and you can see they're now a million miles out of them. This one's on the meter and this one's on the appliance. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the tap on full rate. Now some of you are going to be saying oh you need to do this in maximum well, I know the flow rate through this tap is more than this boiler is going to cope with. So it's going to go on full rate. 
But you can do whatever you want. Put it on your tap if you want. Put it on full rate if you want. I don't really care. I know what I would do. I'm going to put it on full rate on the tap. And then let's see what we've got. Let's see if we do have less than a one millibar drop between the meter and the appliance to check and make sure the trainee's got the pipe sizing correct. Anyway, let's go and get the tap on. So hopefully you can hear the taps on full and the boiler's going at full rate. So remember, this one is at the meter, this one's at the appliance. So we've got 20.6 at the meter and we've got 20.29 at the appliance. So you can see that our working pressure at the meter to the appliance is less than a one millibar drop. So that means our trainees have pipe sized it correctly. So well done boys. Now I've finished the test at the meter. I can now put my test nipple back in quickly. And then I can use my LDF to see whether I've got a leaking or not, which it isn't. Now, some guys like to LDF everything and spray stuff all over the place. But just remember, LDF can be corrosive. So make sure you clean it off. Otherwise, you're going to create corrosion at the meter. So that's what we finished here now. Now we need to go to the boiler because there's some tests we need to do now at the boiler for the benchmark. Now, according to the benchmark at the back of this manufacturer's instructions, we need to do the test or the dynamic inlet pressure test for central heating. Now, we don't have to gas rate this boiler on central heating because it says here in the manufacturers, if it's a combi boiler, do it on hot water only. But we need to do this inlet pressure. We've already done it on hot water and on central heating, we're at 20.46 when it's just coming on. So that's what we will be writing down in the benchmark for our inlet pressure on central heating. Now I am going to gas rate this on central heating and I will be doing those figures, but uh, according to this, we don't. So now we've finished here, what I can do is take off the inlet test point. Now, I found a little eight milli spanner is the best for removing the test point on here. I'm just gonna whip that off and screw it in. And just nip it up with my spanner, but I need to test it now with my LDF. Make sure it goes all the way around, leave it for a few minutes, a few seconds, and it's not leaking. So that's the test doing at the meter and into the boiler. So now we can do things like gas rating, flow return temperatures, and fluid gas analyzer tests, cold water temperatures, hot water temperatures. But we don't have to do the flow rate, neither according to the benchmark, but we will be doing. Anyway, let's get on with that. So let's check out and see what this cold water is giving us. Make sure I don't get round in the... while I'm doing it. So that's giving us 14 litres at 12 degrees, 11 degrees. It's split in between 11 and 12 degrees. Let's try the hot tap. Now this boiler does restrict this hot water coming, coming through, which you will see. As you can see, it's given us eight liters. Now it's given us seven liters. There's a massive difference between the hot and cold water. And we've got 48 degrees, 
47 degrees. So 48 degrees at 6 litres. 6 litres isn't very good, is it? But anyway, 49 degrees. If you take this flow rate jug away, you can see it still looks like it's got a pretty good flow on there. But as you can see from the rear cup or the flow cup, just under seven, six, yeah, six litres. Without 50 wall degrees. Now this boiler can tell us the flow rate so we don't need the weir cup. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go into D36. So there's D, we need to accept it. We need to now go up to 36. We need to accept it. We now need to go and turn the tap on and it should give us the flow rate at the tap. So you can see at the moment, our flow rate at the tap is 6.8, 6.9 litres a minute. So the wake up wasn't that far out, was it? Now with the help of a little cheat, we can actually find the hot water temperature at the tap. This is accurate to about one degree, plus or minus. So again, we need to be in the D settings. So we need to accept this, but this time, we're going to go to 41, which is actually the return temperature for the heating. So we're going to accept that. So at the moment it's saying 53 degrees, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the tap on again, and then we should get the hot water temperature coming out of the boiler. So you can see we've got a hot water temperature of around 48, 49 degrees, which was as accurate really as the thermometer at the weir cup. So there's a little cheat for you. But don't tell Glowworm that. So let's gas rate it on central heating. I'll wait till it gets to a full figure. So. 260, so 9.260. Let's wait for two minutes and I'll get back to you. Two minutes up, so 9.321. Just remember, I could have actually done that over a minute, but I've done it over two for the heating. Now I've got the hot water on, let's gas rate that. Again, I'll wait for a full figure. So 9.405. Two minutes up, 4 point up, no, 9.473. Alright, get the tap off and then we'll do the mass. Now I've connected my two SP323 temperature probes onto the flow and return pipes. Now on this boiler, it's not been range rated. The heating system hasn't been balanced, so I haven't got a clue what the radiators are doing. But let's have a look on the iPad and see what our flow return temperatures are. Now I've set my flow temperature to a maximum of 55. So at the moment we have a flow temperature of 48.8. We have a return temperature of 39.3, so a 9.8 now 9.7 degree difference between our flow and return. Let's wait till it gets closer to the 55 and see what we end up with. Now we're not far off now, we've got a flow temperature of 51.9, we've got a return temperature of 42.9, so we've got a 9 degree difference. So and remember, nothing's balanced, nothing's set up on this boiler, I've just literally turned it on. Now the next test is to flow gas analyse this appliance. So I've got my DC711 connected to the iPad. I've got my probe pushed in about 150mm into 
the sampling point position on the turret. I've got my pump running. I now need to get the appliance into chimney sweep mode. Now, service mode, chimney sweep mode, whatever you want to call it. On this appliance, I need to put it into P01. Now, in the manufacturer's instructions for this boiler, it just says the CO2 needs to be 9.2 plus or minus 1. And it says if it isn't, then we must contact Glowworm for some instructions. Anyway, let's get this in P01 and get it into low fire first. First thing we need to do is press these three lines here, which will take us into the menu. We keep pressing it again till we get to the spanner. We now need to use the plus button to get into our secret code for engineers only. We now need to press the tick to accept it. We're now in the diagnostic setting, but we want the P settings. So we press the plus button till it gets up to P and then we press the tick again. Now we need to go to P01, press the tick again. This now puts us into the service mode. It starts at zero, which is the lowest the boiler will go. So we're now in low fire. So we're in P01, zero, zero, zero. So that means we're in its minimum rate this boiler can operate at. So let's see what happens on the screen. So as you can see, we've got a CO of four parts per million. We've got a carbon dioxide of 7.9 and we've got zero in the ratio. There's not enough numbers for it to register. Now remember this is in low rate. The 9.2 is when it's in maximum. So we seem to be getting a stable reading, four and eight, so let's put it in maximum and see what we get there. So to put this in high rate, we need to press the plus button. And this will now take us up to 100% because this is a percentage figure. We are now in the boiler's maximum rate it can produce. Now the boiler's been running on maximum now for a couple of minutes. You can see we've now got a CO of 129 ppm, we've got a CO2 of 8.8 .8, and we've got a ratio of 0 0.0015. We've now gone up to a, a CO2 of, well it keeps going 8.8, 8.9. Now remember the manufacturer says if you don't get 9.2 plus or minus 1, you should be ringing them up. now. Put in the comments guys down below if you think we should be ringing Glowworm and telling them that our CO2 reading is not 9.1 to 9.3 or well we're going to leave it. Me personally I won't be ringing them. Now the next test I've swapped the probe into the fluid integrity test so we have a CO of 6 we have a CO2 of 0, 0.0 and we've got an oxygen reading of 20.9. I'm not interested in the CO, I'm only interested in the CO2, which I can go up to 0, 0.2 and I've got nothing. And I'm interested in my oxygen, I've got 20.9 and I can go down to 20.6. So everything's good on fluid integrity. The last analyzer test to do is the sweep test around the appliance. I've now got the boiler in maximum. I've got this set up for the ambient room temperature, two minute test, and we're looking for less than 10 parts per million of CO. I'm just going to be sweeping around the casing, sweeping around the turret, and making sure I've not got any CO coming into the room. So I'll catch back with you when the two minutes is up. So the test is completed, it says um, nothing, <laughs> it said we've got a minimum of zero, a maximum we, had, we did pick up one parts per million before, we've got the average of zero, so the sweep test has passed. Now last thing I like to do is put the inhibitor in, 
So, first thing I'm gonna do is turn off the valves to this filter. Now, uh, I think some of you may know, this is actually uh, a Worcester filter <laughs> because this boiler doesn't actually come with a filter. So, and I had a Worcester one lying around. So I'm just gonna turn this off. So we've purposely put this in an awkward spot, but you'll find out about that sooner or later. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a 14 mil spanner and I've got a bucket down here. And I'm going to take the drain out. So hopefully I get the bucket in the right location. Maybe I should have relieved the pressure first, but I didn't bring my bleed key with me. It's over there. <laughs> so anyway, don't do that, you get wet. So now I can take out the magnet. Now the air's coming in, we'll add a lot more water. So while this is coming out, I'll go and get the bleed key. I'm just going to should what I should have done in the first place. So let's see what this magnet's got on it. Hopefully nothing. And as you can see, it has got a little bit on it. Nothing spectacular, but it has got a little bit on it. So let's clean this up. So first thing, put the drain back in. And the inhibitor. And this is where I'll lose half of it. <laughs> because I've opened the bleed, I can now, I should be able to tighten the top back up. What do you do with the keys, guys? We always put a screw at the side of the boiler, like we have done here, so you can just hang it on there. But what do you do? Just give it the customer? Do you put it inside the boiler? Let us know in the comments, guys, what you do. Anyway, now I'm just going to close the vent and open the valves. It doesn't really matter which order you open these up in. Now I can bleed. Uh, 
And after I've mopped up and cleaned all the wire up, it's now ready to put back into operation. Now that's the commissioning procedure for this glowworm microcomb. Now if you want to purchase any of the test equipment I've used, so any of the TPI products, so the DC711, the uh, DC SP323s, or the uh, 620, so the probes are the digital manometer, or even this U-Flow cup and uh, standard thermometer, uh, we will sell them to you. Well, Tomcat Plumbing and Heating Supplies will sell them to you. And if you do want to purchase any of these at the moment, because the website's a bit rubbish at the moment, then why don't you drop Kate an email on this email address. So Kate at uh, Tomcat Plumbing and Heating Supplies.co.uk She'll sort you right out with it. Anyway, now we've installed it, now we've commissioned it, in part three, we're going to see how easy this is to take apart. So, hopefully you've liked the video, and I'll catch you on part three. Cheers.